Hi, I'm Bill Woodard, and welcome to the October edition of the Chamber Corner. We are here and we have a special guest with us and you're going to present, I guess, two things actually to us. Uh, let's talk first about the organization uh, and maybe we ought to mention the uh, Starlight Canteen just uh, briefly at first and then go into the organization. But I, I want to kind of turn it over to you, Teresa. All right. Thank you so much. My name is Teresa Bush. I'm the secretary of a newly formed group called Smith County Historical Tourism Society. We are a 501c3 and we recently were recognized by the state of Tennessee as a charitable organization which allows us to solicit donations. So as Bill said, we're going to get right to the main thing, which is we'd love for you all to come out and support our endeavors, which is revolving around tourism development pertaining to the World War II training exercises called the Tennessee Maneuvers. On Saturday, October 23rd, we're going to have two events, as Bill said. One of them is free from 3 o'clock until 6 o'clock, and we'll talk a little bit more about what folks can expect from that. And then at 6 o'clock, we will have a ticketed event in the Rose Building that we are calling the Gala Celebration. Bill, what we're doing is trying to recreate an event that happened a lot during World War II, and that was a war bond drive, mm -hmm. where folks would get together and try to sell war bonds to fund the war, because we didn't have a whole lot of money back then to do that. So that's why we're calling it an evening or an afternoon at the Starlight Canteen, because a lot of these fundraising efforts back then, or war bond drives, happened at a local place like the Courthouse Square, and it usually happened at a canteen. Bill, I had somebody the other day say, well, a canteen something you drink, drink out of. Right. Exactly, exactly. And I'm like, well, there's another w way to use that word, and it was a place where groups could meet. And in this case, the soldiers were allowed to meet at a canteen to uh, have something to eat or drink, maybe take a bath, maybe there would be an organization there, like a group of church folks that would allow them to write letters and so on. So we're pretending like that is is happening. So here's what's going to happen between 3 and 6. Again, it's free. One half of the courthouse is going to be like it was 1943. We are going to have some ladies singing like the Andrews sisters. Oh, that'd be great. So what happened back then would be the Grand Ole Opry stars would go around to these small communities to try and get people to come. Another thing they did during the war bond drive is they would have military vehicles there so folks could have their picture made by them, maybe meet some of the soldiers Soldiers. Because, Bill, as you know, we were still in that little limbo during world before World War II started of do we remain neutral, do we help our friends, what, what, what are we going to do? So they were trying to build interest as much as they could. Mm -hmm. So the folks at Sam H. Warner Military Museum in Mont Eagle, they're going to bring three vehicles for us to have our picture made with and to look at. Shout out to Jackie Carver at Sanderson's Funeral Home. He's going to allow us to store those vehicles in his garage. Probably shouldn't have told anybody that, but I'm sure everything out there <laughs> is very secure, it don't you? Is, and he's very generous. Absolutely. In that way. And and we are also going to have the Girl Scouts. Bill, the Girl Scouts were very instrumental in helping on the home front. They are going to do a victory garden demonstration because folks were encouraged to raise their own vegetables. Now, us folks in the country, we always did that, yeah, anyway, did that anyway, but it was the city folks that they were trying to do, so the Girl Scouts are going to be doing that. We are also going to have other drives. Now, back then, they needed metal to make machine guns and tanks. They needed nylon so that they could build ropes and parachutes. They needed newspaper so they could make cartridges for their bullets and then also for uh, uh, um, target shooting practice. The kids will be able to do several things at the Sam H. Warner area. They'll be able to hand crank an air raid siren. The siren okay. would go off to tell you to get under your chair or run for safety because something's happening. They will also be able to hand crank a 
generator. The soldiers had to use a hand crank generator sometimes out in the field, so they'll be able to do that. And then also the kids will be able to stomp on tin cans. That was another thing that they needed back then were the tin cans. And we are gonna have posters like this one and like this one that folks can learn. So it's very important for us to not only know why the Tennessee maneuvers happen, but learn something as you go by. Mm -hmm. Metal drive, that was another biggie. Um, they needed the metal to again, and the tin to build those things. We're gonna have a pile of metal there. And I've been very fortunate. We have an old metal bed. We have uh, springs from an old bed. So we will display that as well. So on the Back then, we're pretending like we're raising money for the war, we're pretending like we're getting nylons, we're pretending like we're getting newspapers, and we're pretending like we're getting tin cans. So all of that is gonna be on the recreation of an evening at the starlight. Okay, well now, now this uh, organization that you're with, uh, they're actually putting this on and it's going to, uh, any money that's raised and everything is gonna to go toward getting uh, markers and things like that for the uh, maneuvers is in the counties and right? Absolutely, we're focusing on <clears throat> tourism development because um, we have lots of photographs. I have access to a lot of national um, archives photographs that specifically say Hartsville, that specifically say Russell Hill, uh, that specifically say Granville. So we would like to work on a self-guided driving tour of these historic locations. Now they don't look like they did back then, but like many markers of historical significance, you don't see exactly what happened there. But if folks will look outside the chamber office here in Carthage and also on the courthouse grounds, you will see the Civil right. War markers. And so we eventually hope to be able to do that, to drive folks to Granville, which is not Smith County, but it's the edge, up to Chestnut Mound where the barrage balloons were in the sky, down to Pleasant Shade where I have some fantastic pictures of tanks going through um, uh, the field there. We hope to incorporate Hartsville and Macon County. I've made several presentations there and make it a three county driving tour. So those are our first initial goals on that. I want to jump to the six o'clock gala celebration. At six o'clock, folks who have a ticket can walk across the street and go to the Rose Building. There, you will see two things. We're going to also put together a play about the Tennessee maneuvers. I've had the joy of interviewing more than 35 folks, historians, soldiers, witnesses, his, um, soldiers, historians, witnesses, wives of soldiers and children of soldiers who can tell the story of how the maneuvers affected them. So we're going to incorporate live actors to set up a particular story and then on screen you will see the today interview of that person finishing the story. So that is what our play is going to be. Then after the play presentation, we are going to have an expert on the Ghost Army. And if you don't know about the Ghost Army, we certainly hope that you will log on and find out. The Ghost Army was a group of soldiers who during World War II used trickery to fool the Germans. They used inflatable tanks. They used sonic deception, sounds that made it sound like 30,000 soldiers were going down the road and again we want folks to learn from what we're doing so inside the rose building did i bring that one inside the rose building we will have other posters i didn't bring that one but that's okay letting people know about the, and see pictures of the tanks. Now, I forgot to mention this, Rick is gonna be bringing an inflatable tank that was used during World War II mm -hmm. as a part of their deception <clears throat> tactics. So Rick is flying in from Chicago to be our guest speaker. He has revamped his presentation to focus on the fact that the Ghost Army formed here at Camp Forest in Tullahoma where Arnold Engineering is today and then went on to do 20-something missions overseas. 
uh, Bill, he's never spoken in Middle Tennessee before. So if you're not interested in tourism development and supporting that, maybe you just want to come and see Rick Beyer. Now, the other thing is we're going to have food for folks and Bill, we're going to take a step back in time and folks are going to be able to enjoy food that they would have enjoyed back then. And guess what? I have another poster for that. So. Folks will be able to enjoy Spam potato salad, for example, and you're probably going, ooh-wee. <laughs> well, we didn't think Spam on a piece of bread would be that good like the soldiers had, but we wanted folks to have an idea. And again, they can see these posters and learn. Right. Also during the war, there was something called a war cake. The ladies didn't get a lot of sugar because a lot of the ingredients were going to our soldiers. So folks will be able to test a war cake. We'll have congealed salad. We will also also have victory garden vegetables that people can um, can enjoy. So that's going to be the ticketed event, a preview of our play, and then Rick Beyer. I want to jump back to the other free activities that are happening on the grounds of the courthouse that day, and it's going to be pretty much a show and tell. A lot of the maneuvers, as I said, took place here, and we're talking about where soldiers went out into the fields and practiced like it was war. Folks such as B.J. Rich from the Rome, Rock City area right. has done a lot of metal detecting down there. He has found a lot of items, including shells from the maneuvers. He's going to be there letting kids touch these things and see and how they were used. We also have some fake mines that will be here. And then I can't forget our dear friend David Landreth uh, over at uh, New Middleton, where a plane crashed on his property. And right. a few years ago, they were able to dug up a few pieces that the Army didn't take with them. So we're going to have a few pieces of that there for the people to take a look at. So it's going to be kind of a show and tell on that side. And then also we have several folks who have written books pertaining to World War II, including books about Camp Forest, which was where the prisoners of war were held, an induction and training uh, ceremony, uh, ceremony uh, installation as well. So there's the back then time and then the today time, which again makes up an evening at the Starlight Canteen. Okay, October the 23rd. And uh, folks, if you want any more information and you can't find it, uh, obviously you should be able to find it. But if you can't, call us here at the chamber and we'll be happy to help you out. 735-2093. Teresa, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you so much, Bill, and we hope to see you there. Okay, uh, we're excited about an event that's coming up. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell them why you're here. Hi, um, I'm Jess Carpenter. I'm working with uh, Stephanie Winfrey and the Smith County Coalition for Unity and Progress. We're doing Hometown Halloween on the Carthage Square this year. Um, so what Hometown Halloween is, we are making a really cool candy maze. We're going to have games on the lawn for the kids to play. We're... Um, We've got candy, there's going to be candy everywhere, we're going to do a costume contest, we'll have prizes for that. We're trying to make it a really cool event uh, for families and kids to get excited about Halloween, get out in the town, uh, bring the town together, um, have fun for that. We are still looking for sponsors for that. Um, any volunteers that want to come help, uh, dress spooky, we're, we're kind of aiming for a haunted maze mm -hmm. um, kind of deal. and. Um, if anyone's interested in sponsoring the event or volunteering for the event, you can contact Stephanie Winfrey. Uh, she's on Facebook. I won't put her phone number out. <laughs> okay. that'll, that'll be fine. And they can call here at the chamber, 735-2093, and we can get them the information to get to get with her. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, uh, well now, you guys are going to be set up uh, on the uh, courthouse lawn. Yes. Of course, the Jeepers Creepers truck or treat isn't going to be going on during the same time and uh, yes. there's a lot of folks that are getting involved in that and by the way if they want to get involved in that call down here and let us know that you're going to set up and we'll have a spot for you yeah absolutely and uh, I understand the um, girls basketball team I believe that's right Mr. Randall Smith they're going to be putting on a chili cook-off yes and uh, somebody told me there was a costume contest. Yes, um, yeah, I'm actually spearheading the costume contest. So okay. I haven't flushed out all the details, but we're looking to hopefully have um, a kids, kids contest, a group contest, and maybe even a pet costume contest. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll we'll have more details. I'm working that out this week. So hopefully I'll have more details by the mid end of next week. Okay. Well, uh, it'll be a good night for a costume contest because a lot of people are going to be dressed up anyway. So all they got to do is just be there and register. I'm sure you'll have a registration yep. booth and uh, set it up there. So it's all happening right on the uh, courthouse square. Yep. Right and on the uh, lawn. okay, right on the lawn. So. Folks, if you want to come down, and uh, uh, the date's not hard to remember, is it? Absolutely not. October, October 31st. 31st. And start what time does it start? 5 p.m. We're going to run from 5 to 9. 5 to 9. Okay. All right, folks, we'll remember that. And that's in Carthage on the square, 5 to 9 on Halloween night, which is October the 31st. And it's a Sunday this year. Yes. All right. Well, thanks for coming. No problem. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to have UT Extension show up at Thank you, our building. Thank you. Uh, Chris, go ahead and introduce yourself. Chris Hicks, UT Extension here in Smith County. All right. Now, you always have something especially <laughs> interesting to talk about. So what is it this time? Well, we, we've got a lot of things going on this time of year. It's, it's harvest is wide open. Mm -hmm. It's not today because it's pouring the rain. But as soon as it dries up, our farmers are going to be harvesting. We've got corn plots out through the university. Some of our local farmers have helped with, so we'll be harvesting those as well. Uh, we've got some events coming up. We've got uh, our Upper Cumberland Beef Summit that I'm excited about next month on, I believe, the 13th. It's on a Saturday. And then the next week, we're going to do a field day here in Smith County at BHS Angus. We're going to do a field day about bull selection. So a lot of stuff geared towards our beef producers. Of course, Smith County is a, a big beef county, oh, so there's yeah, a lot of cattle. Sure. More cattle here than people. I don't know if you realize that, Bill, <laughs> but there's more cattle in Smith County than there are people. Well, I did so not realize it's pretty that. important. That's, that's yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty telling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there it is. Uh, sometimes I like cattle more than some some uh, people. Some, anyway, some so of them are easier to <laughs> so get along right. with. That's right. The, the other thing I wanted to mention and really highlight this month with you is is our social media presence and our our youtube page in particular so if people want to reach out to us get in touch with us we love people coming in the office we want you to call the office at at 615-735-2900 uh, but we also have got some really cool things on our social media especially our youtube page if you go to youtube and search smith county extension we've got dozens of videos that we've done that I think would be helpful to folks. They're educational videos. Uh, Katie's done several on there about careers for 4-H members. Mm -hmm. We've done several about gardening, <clears throat> uh, landscaping, forestry, all kinds of topics, plus our, our show that we're doing with DTC that airs monthly, Cultivating Communities. We put all our episodes on our YouTube page as well. So. If, if you miss it on DTC or there's an episode that you missed or, or really enjoyed and want to go watch again, uh, you can do that on our YouTube page. So and do you have them like uh, cataloged as to uh, what uh, area you're covering in each video? Or? We do. And so we've, we've got a, a playlist, a Cultivating Communities playlist where we, we list each video and the county we covered and so for this month we were in Macon County so the, the video that's going to air on DTC this month and is available on YouTube is Macon County and it was it was really special to me because I grew up on a tobacco farm like a lot of people watching I'm sure a lot of Smith County folks oh, remember yeah. the good old days we, we when everybody had tobacco and so to go and and sort of relive that and and be in those tobacco barns Katie said it, and it's true. You can smell it watching the video. You can smell that tobacco just watching the video. And it really took me back, and I think a lot of viewers would really enjoy that. If you grew up in tobacco, you may not necessarily want to go back to that, uh, no, <coughs> but I, you I, might I, enjoy not, the trip down memory lane yeah. going and watching those videos. Yeah, I, I remember suckering tobacco and uh, putting it in the barn and, and all of that, and uh, it was good, rewarding work, but it was also hard work. Well, it, it taught you work ethic that you've still no, got, no and, and so a lot of people can can relate to that it paid for a lot of educations a lot of people's farms were paid for by tobacco so it was in its day and of course we still got some tobacco in Smith County but not to the extent that we once did uh, and the same is true for Macon County that we highlight in the video but, and then but it was, was still good and then there was that age-old question pull knife or chop knife <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to pull with there you myself. go there you go but uh, anyway okay well uh, what else is going on anything else that we missed well I, I we're we're doing a lot of uh, a lot of stuff through uh, through our, our 
beef and, and also our small ruminant programs. We just wrapped up our, our small ruminant conference. The beef programs uh, that we mentioned that are coming up uh, are gonna take up a lot of our time getting ready for those. And I hope our cattle farmers will participate in those. It'll be good educational opportunities. And uh, for sure, as you're, as you're going through the fall, uh, keep in mind uh, too, I always like to mention this this time of year, harvest time is a time we've got a lot of big equipment moving from one field to another. Right. You're, you're very likely to get behind somebody going slow, right? You might get behind a farmer in a tractor or a combine like with a, pulling a, gra a grain cart, whatever it may be. And I know that's frustrating because I don't like to wait behind people either. But just remember that they've got families to get home to, so be careful about going around them. They are trying to feed us, so <laughs> I appreciate that while you're waiting in line. And, and, provide, and, yeah. and so uh, that's the thing to keep in mind this harvest season. I actually, uh, two days ago, was behind a horse and buggy. Oh, yeah? Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, th there's a lot of that stuff out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You are a little bit out of uniform today, your shirt. Uh, well, I, I'm wearing green, and so this this is National 4-H Week. Oh, okay. uh, Katie and I are both wearing green in support of National 4-H Week, so I'm sure she'll mention that. In her segment, she'll, okay, she'll well, go a little I, more detail. I just on wanted that. to point that out yeah. that I thought yeah. something was different. That's it. Yeah, okay. You can't get anything by you. Uh, well, <laughs> what can I say? Well, <laughs> folks, it's always a pleasure to have Mr. Chris Hicks with the UT Extension here. And Chris, I look forward to next month. I'm Thank sure you, Bill. You'll bring something good. I appreciate it. Thank you. You know, it's been a long time since I uh, did the 4-H pledge, but uh, the, the 4-H's, it stands for what? Let's see if you know. Oh, I know. Head, heart, hands, and health. All we right. teach all our fourth graders that, so they should have learned that in their September club meeting. Yeah, of course, fourth grade has been a while back for me, so I, yeah. I maybe forgot that. Anyway, what's going on with 4-H? Oh, we are staying busy as usual. As Chris mentioned, it is actually National 4-H week, so a very exciting week. But if uh, you know Smith County Extension, every week is 4-H week for us. But go. we're especially celebrating this week <clears throat> on our social media pages. We've made some fun videos, um, so definitely check those out you can go back and watch those later on as well but we're also in the clubs we had great first meetings in September got everybody enrolled fourth through eighth grade and this month in October we're starting to learn a little bit about 4-H speeches trying to get those 4-Hers prepared for their club speech contest which will take place in November so we've got some nervous fourth graders that are going to be given a speech for the first time and some confident fifth and sixth graders that are ready to compete this year. Um, your 4-Hers should have all the tools they need to be successful with their 4-H speech after their 4-H club meeting. But of course, a little parental or grandparent support never hurts as they are writing that speech and practicing. Uh, you can be a big help to them just by listening and helping them be confident before their November 4-H club meeting. Yeah, and, and it really helps kids uh, when they get that kind of encouragement and going through this uh, later on in life. I know uh, a lot of the people that I meet, uh, something like that was what helped them to get into the vocation that they're in. Absolutely. We talk in our school club meetings about careers that have uh, public speaking as a part of a requirement or just the simple fact of having to do a job interview and talking in front of others. So I think the kids really understand how important those communication skills are. And I hope that by starting early, it will make things a little bit easier for them later on. Um, we've also had a couple of big successes in the past month with the Smith County 4-H program. We had two different judging teams that competed in the last month. Our forestry judging team uh, competed at Cedars of Lebanon State Park in the regional contest. And our senior high team was actually second in the central region. So they're going to get to go on and compete at the state contest at the end of October. So make sure to uh, be thinking about them and wish them luck because they've worked really hard. And then we had our poultry judging contest, which took place in Rutherford County. And again, we had some really outstanding individuals. We actually had the second high individual in the junior division, the first high individual in the junior high division, and the first high individual in the senior high division. So it was almost a clean sweep by Smith wow. County 4 Hers. So we've got some impressive kiddos doing some awesome things. Yeah, well, uh, I've always known that you had good uh, kids around here to do stuff like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Okay, well, uh, is there anything else we're missing? Not really. As always, the best ways to keep up with us are through 
Facebook and our website, smith.tennessee.edu. Or if you need more information, feel free to call the office, 615-735-2900, and we can get you all the information you need so you never miss out on any of the Smith County 4-H opportunities and activities. Okay, well, Katie, thank you for coming by. Absolutely. As always, it's a pleasure to have Miss Mary here. Mary, introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Mary Leslie Wakefield. I'm with the Smith County Drug Prevention Coalition. All right, Mary, what have you got for us today? I know there's stuff going on. That's right, and this was just interesting. Uh, this is the t uh, student survey that we do every two years, and it's our 8th, 10th, and 12th graders. And so then we get this data back, and it's really interesting. It helps and that's us. here locally, right? That's right. These are Smith County students. So these are Smith County students telling us what's going on in their schools and in the community and in their lives. So we are able to use this data and plan our events and our education for the school. So it's so important and I really thank the parents that uh, uh, have their, they sign, have to sign a consent uh, so our kids can participate in this. It's so very helpful to the coalition. But one of the data that I wanted to talk about was it asked during the past 12 months as you, as a parent, have you talked uh, to your uh, child about drugs, tobacco, and alcohol? And our, what came back was 59.4% said no, they have not talked to uh, their parents about drugs, tobacco, or alcohol, which is, uh, you know, rounded off that 60% of the parents mm -hmm. are, are not talking to their kids. So that's one of the pushes that we want to do in the coalition. We really want parents to start talking to their kids about these substances. And it doesn't have to be a big technical discussion. You know, you can just be driving uh, to McDonald's or folding laundry up at home, and you just have a talk about, you know, your concerns or how you feel about it, the consequences. You know, just make it really clear so uh, that child knows, you know, that you uh, do not want or will not allow you know, drinking or driving and drinking and the consequences that can happen. So uh, it's just really important to have short, frequent conversations with your kids. Okay, well, I know you, you may not have a statistic on this, but, uh, you know, peer group pressure is is pretty prevalent and, and, and pretty hard on kids as they're growing up. But who is the biggest influencer in a child's life when they're growing up? I'm so glad you asked that, Bill, because that's part of our data, too, and it's also in our uh, student survey. The number one influencer in a child's life is their parents. So if a parent will be very direct and honest and say, we do, we do not want you to drink, we do not want you to use tobacco products, then um, that's a huge influence in that child's life. Even if they roll your eyes uh, when you're talking to them, they still hear you. That's uh, Actually, that's our campaign talk they hear you well I, I, that's a good question because I wondered about that because you do when you're uh, in the process of someone growing up in your household uh, sometimes you think they don't listen to you and, yes. and so in fact they they do hear what you're saying they hear you they might not like what they hear but they hear you yeah. so yes well and then you, you know you're to be a parent not not necessarily a friend or a buddy and sometimes those conflict that, uh, uh, absolutely you have to be that oh uh, what else do you have any other interesting statistics well we have uh, a new event we're doing and to reach parents and we're calling it coffee talks and it's going to be at our new coffee uh, shop here in Carthage, the Rockabilly Coffee. Oh, okay. uh, Virginia is going to let us have a space and it's going to be October the 8th. That's a Friday, 630 because she said that's when her big crowd is. So we're going to be there and we're going to have information for parents uh, about drinking, about alcohol and how it affects the brain. So come out and see us then. Uh, even if it's that early in the morning, you, won't, you need to get your coffee early anyway, right? Well, yeah, the coffee comes early in the morning. And by the way, uh, Rockabilly Coffee is a uh, chamber member, and uh, you need if you haven't been there, you need to go by there. They've got some really good uh, croissants and cinnamon, cinnamon rolls, rolls and uh, yes. uh, a, a lot of stuff besides the, the, the really good coffee. Yes, and we're so appreciative that they're letting us do this. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? Well, we're going to be helping out with the health fair that Riverview's putting on. That is going to be, um, let's see, October the 12th, and it's from 2 to 6 at the Ag Center. So I know they'll have all kind of uh, free stuff out there, check your blood pressure weight. Sometimes they do blood sugars. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do, but we'll be out there too. So come and see us. Okay. And this is the first time they've done this in a while because of the COVID. That's pandemic. right. That's right. So it'd be a good time for you to get back kind of on board with your uh, uh, health issues and, and finding out if you have a situation or or need to be talking to someone. Absolutely. October is going to be a very busy month for us because, of course, Halloween's coming around the corner. And October the 30th, which is Saturday, the Church of God has a huge trick or trunk, and we're going to be there. And then again, on uh, October 31st, Je- uh, Jeepers Creepers with the Chamber will be there too. Right. Uh, it'll be on the square, and uh, we will be telling people more about that. Uh, but we're looking forward to October. It's going to be a busy month, like you said. Yes, and that's the way we like it. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Well, thanks for coming by. Thank you, Bill. Well, we got a special guest here with us, and uh, Mr. Donovan, if you would, introduce yourself. Tell them who you with. I am Donovan Rice, and I'm the Youth Prevention Coordinator with the Smith County Drug Prevention Coalition. Okay, and you wanted to talk about a special event, didn't you? Yeah, well, we got a, a new Take Back team. It's our youth coalition here in Smith County. Uh, we're calling it the Take Back team, and I just wanted to take a moment to uh, invite all of our youth and young adults to it. Uh, we're serving students 12 to 24, um, and it's just so important to us and the coalition that uh, the youth recognize that they have a voice in our community. Uh, so this is their opportunity to come out. We have a great time. We meet every fourth Wednesday of the month uh, right here at the Chamber of Commerce. So I just want to take a moment to invite them. Uh, 5.30, fourth Wednesday. Okay, and I think I bust through the door on one of your meetings there to, 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 when well, you were having it. Well, that just meant the party could start. The there, there you go. So. I was there. I arrived. Yeah, so. Well, hey, I, I'm glad you guys are doing that, and it's a wonderful uh, initiative that you guys do Thank out you. in the community. Thank you. And you're also uh, over at the Church of God with uh, some of the food drives and things that they're doing over there, too. Uh, yeah, so. we have, I'm the student pastor at Carthage Church of God. Uh, that's where we have our food pantry, uh, open every Tuesday and Thursday until 5 p.m. Uh, so if you're in need or hungry or know somebody who is, give us a call or show up. And that's part of the second harvest, uh, I know. Uh, and, and I haven't mentioned this in a while. Right. We do a, a second Wednesday and mm-hmm. a fourth Wednesday a food drive over at the Ag Center okay. uh, with a second harvest uh, every every month. Yeah. So uh, it, if a person's needing food around here, they ought to be able to find it, shouldn't they? They should be, yeah. I'm glad we have so many resources in our community. Okay. And one more time before we go, mention the Take Back team. Yeah, our Take Back team. We meet right here at the Chamber every fourth Wednesday, 5.30 p.m. We'd love to have you here. Donovan, thanks for coming. Thank you so much, Bill. Okay. We are so glad to have you with us, Bruce. Introduce them. Tell them what organization you're with. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Bill. Um, my name is Bruce Wentworth, and I am the Smith County Veteran Service Officer. Also, I am with the American Legion Okay. here uh, in Carthage, Post 57. All right. And wonderful organization. By the way, they are the guys that helped us put on the uh, summer concert series this year. Did a wonderful job, and I really appreciate what all you guys did with that. Yeah. Anyway, you come to talk to us uh, today about something that's going on, right? Yes, on November 7th, uh, it's the Veterans Day Parade. It's always the Sunday before Veterans Day. We have the Veterans Day Parade, and I've been involved with that probably since uh, I came here and joined the American Legion. Um, it's, uh, uh, there are a lot of folks involved with that. The, uh, we're going to have uh, the bands. We've invited the Smith County High School Band, and we've invited the Gordonsville High School Band. Um, the fire department, the EMS, um, are also, and then we get escorted by the police department here in Carthage, and we have motorcycles from several different groups, uh, American Legion riders, uh, which is well, true to my heart here because I am a rider, right, right. and uh, they they participate along with uh, Justified Motorcycle uh, Riding Club and uh, Silent Creed, and then any other veterans or any other people that want to. Ride a motorcycle, come in there. We have uh, car clubs, Loud and Obnoxious uh, is one of the groups. And then a couple of the other antique car clubs uh, show up and uh, offer to go ahead and and put a veteran in there and put him in an antique car and ride down there. Um, We have the, uh, also the the commander will be walking. We have a float or actually a trailer that 
is going to be drawn by an old uh, uh, international tractor that uh, John Henry, Mr. John Henry, the commander of the American Legion, he's getting that thing ready to, to participate in the parade also. So it's a big event for us. Um, we had the parade. It comes from uh, Carmack Avenue mm -hmm. down Main Street all the way down to the old courthouse. And then we have the ceremony um, at the courthouse. Okay, and uh, of course you put the uh, wreath uh, out, and uh, then you'll have a speaker, I presume? That is correct. Uh, we, the Boy Scouts uh, and the Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, and uh, so on and so forth, put the, put the wreath out, uh, bring the flag down to half staff. They're involved in that. And then our guest speaker this year is uh, retired Command Sergeant Major Leatherwood. He's a 24-year uh, veteran. He works for uh, one of the departments here in Tennessee, and he is going to be our main speaker. And our own uh, uh, chaplain, uh, Donnie Payne, is going to do the prayer, the invocation, and the, uh, he'll also be singing the national anthem. Oh, okay. So. Donnie's a, a, a good guy and a very multi-talented guy, too. He is. He's a, he, he got a bunch of good guys over there. And, and Mr. John Henry, uh, I had the privilege of, of being in there with you and him. Uh, you guys have a building across the street from the courthouse now. That is correct. We uh, recently, uh, during the summer, we purchased the, the building there at 222 Main Street. We named it Veterans Hall, or Smith County Veterans Hall. And it's open to... Uh, to all uh, veterans here in Smith County. Um, we're not up and running yet as of yet. We're still going through the, the baby steps of getting um, certified for occupancy, which happened yesterday. We got our, we got approved and waiting on the certificate. And then we have to do a couple of improvements inside, but uh, pretty soon we expect it to be uh, fully operational. And I will be moving my office from the courthouse over to that building there, uh, to the veterans uh, hall to uh, conduct uh, business with the veterans as a VSO. Okay, and, and veterans, if they come into the county and they don't know this, your office, uh, you're in uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday half day, is that right? That is correct. So you'll move those hours over to the uh, building across the street. Maintain then. the same hours and maybe even more too um, at the, the new building because more veterans may get involved to keep it open during that time. And if anybody comes in needing some service, uh, put the word out, give them a call, give me a call, and I'll see what I can do, whether I need to come down there or talk to them and make other arrangements. So okay. we're, we're trying to help the veterans. Hey, but you'll still have your ceremonies and you'll still uh, uh, do things over at the courthouse lawn as well. Oh, absolutely, sure. absolutely. Uh, yeah, because uh, we, we don't want to lose you guys doing that as gotcha. well. You know, try well, to keep an eye on it from across the street. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, uh, we're sure glad you guys are around here and appreciate what all you do. And if you're a veteran and you're in the county and you haven't contacted these guys, uh, you you need to because they have a lot of services services that they can offer you. Uh, Bruce, how does a person get in touch with you? There are uh, several ways to get in touch with me. One by phone is 615-735-1148. I can, again, that's 615-735-1148. I can be emailed at bwentworth at smithcountytn.gov. And uh, that's about the only two methods right now other than walking on up. Uh, okay, and, and of course, when you're, your door is always open as long as you've not got somebody in there you're working with. That is correct, that is okay. correct. Well, great, great for you to come by. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you about some other things that are going on with that as veterans have uh, events. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Bill. I appreciate it. Okay. We're really happy to have Mr. Colby here with us. Colby, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell them uh, you're ab absolutely representing two or three different things here. But Yeah, well, I've got, pick one. got several things to talk about. Uh, my name is Colby McKinney. Uh, I guess we can get to what I'm talking about in each thing, but I'm here representing the uh, Smith County Noon Rotary Club, uh, the Gornsville Halloween Bash, and may talk a little Lions Club too, so. Okay, well the first thing on the agenda, I guess would be the Halloween Bash, is that right? Yes, the Gordonsville Halloween Bash, um, October 31st, 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, if you've never been to Gordonsville on Halloween, <laughs> it is a treat. Uh, it is an event in itself, and we have formed an official event out of uh, something that was already happening. Um, 
from five to eight, we plan on shutting down Main Street from ShopRite all the way down to the high school. Uh, we've got about 30 vendors uh, and participants lined up uh, to come and hand out candy. As of today, we anticipate that number to grow. Uh, we got word that Domino's Pizza is going to be on site. They've got a food truck and they are going to be cooking um, pizza on site fresh and have that available for sale. Um, Southern Shave and Brew Company, um, they're going to be there selling coffee and shaved ice and things like that. And then everything else will be free. Um, candy uh, galore. You can walk about 300 yards and fill up a five gallon bucket of candy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, there will be tons and tons of free candy. Uh, we'll have uh, dance music and Halloween music playing. Uh, there will be a, uh, what we call a touch-a-truck experience. And basically what we'll have is have a, a tractor, a skid steer, a police car, an ambulance, things that kids can go up and touch and see and experience. And uh, um, so we'll have that there. And we're uh, uh, planning on having several um, things for that. Um, like I said, it's free. 5 to 8 p.m. on the 31st in Gordonsville. Uh, we would love for you to come. We're expecting well over a thousand uh, kids uh, and their family. Well, and, and uh, to give a little history for people that don't know, it, it's sort of an organic thing. I mean, people have been going up and down the street in Gordonsville there on Main Street for probably decades. The town of Gordonsville is perfect for uh, Halloween trick or treating. It's uh, a uh, just a straight main street with uh, tons of houses on each side and all of the houses all the residents in Gornswold, uh down through main street for years have handed out candy mm -hmm. and uh, so we just took uh, the crowd that was already coming and we've made an event out of it and uh, we're having more and more people come each year uh, something i didn't mention is everybody that comes through gets a free ticket and around 7 o'clock, we're going to start giving away a bunch of door prizes. We'll have gift cards and different toys and items and uh, stuff from local um, shops and uh, businesses. And then uh, the grand prize is $250 cash um, sponsored by uh, Wilson Bank and Trust. So uh, no cost to that. All you got to do is just come by and grab a ticket, hang around until about 7, and we will... Um, start giving that stuff away. Okay, well now, the date's not hard to remember because it's October 31st, which is a Sunday this year. Right, it'll be the 31st every year. Yeah, yeah every year it's gonna be on the 31st. Uh, what about the time? 5 to 8 p.m. Um, I would suggest, if you can, um, come early. Uh, I'm sure uh, parking will be an issue because we plan on having a lot of people there. Uh, a lot of people park at the high school or the uh, Methodist Church there in Gordonsville and then you can walk up one side of Main Street and uh, hit all the houses up through there to get candy, come up to the event and then uh, walk back down the other side of Main Street back to your vehicle. Um, the majority of the booths and vendors will be stretched along in front of uh, Bass Funeral Home and also uh, First Baptist Church uh, there in Gordonsville. Okay and uh uh, like you said, parking may be an issue, but the street is actually going to be closed. Correct. It'll be closed from right there at ShopRite all the way down to the high school, so you can walk right down the middle of Main Street. It'll be safe. Um, uh, before, it was an issue because uh, thousands, literally, of kids were coming to Gordonsville to trick-or-treat, and there was only one sidewalk on each side of the road, and it's only about, what, five foot wide? Right. And uh, it just wasn't enough space for those people to safely walk uh, up and down the street. So having the street shut down has made it a safe environment um, for people to come and not have to worry about their young ones stepping out in front of a moving vehicle. So uh, we'll also have a little train there that night that'll be shuttling people or to just be a fun ride for folks up and down Main Street if they want to catch the uh, the train shuttle and uh, uh, that's also free. So. Okay, and the, and the detour, of course, you turn there uh, where the, uh, in front of City Hall. Right, you turn, it's uh, Hickman Highway to, then you turn left there at Oak Street and then uh, turn left again to Maple and that brings you out at the uh, high school, so. Right, and so the only section uh, closed is really from uh, uh, Bass Funeral Home down to the high school and right. the rest mm -hmm. of it's open. Okay, uh, well, anything else to add about the Halloween Bash other than it's going to be a great time? I'm probably forgetting something, but um, just come out and be expecting a good time. Tons of free candy, tons of vendors, um, music, dancing, um, and you can get you some sliced pizza that's good and fresh this year. So. Yeah. Well, that's going to be a good time then. Okay, well now we got some other things coming on. Uh, we we were going to represent Rotary here. I guess you're 
the noon rotary and I can talk about the uh, morning rotary. Okay, if you want to go uh, for yours first and I'll I'll talk about mine okay, after. Okay, well on uh, October the 15th and October the 16th, the Carthage Rotary Club mm -hmm. is having their uh, pancake breakfast that they do every year in Gordonsville. Uh, in the parking lot of the uh, former ShopRite, uh, which is right across the street almost from uh, City Hall. And uh, it, it starts on Friday the 15th at 6 a.m. and goes to 9.30, and it, uh, on Saturday it starts at 7 a.m. and goes to 9.30. And the proceeds of the um, pancake breakfast go toward scholarships uh, for the Gordonsville High School, and uh, they present uh, two scholarships every year and uh, they've been doing this for as uh, long as I can remember and it's an all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast and uh, those guys will be set up there uh, and and just come on by and uh, donate your money and eat all the pancakes and sausage that you can eat and uh, and just have a good time they got good coffee too and uh, these guys uh, they do this for the community uh, in the fall we always do the one at the uh, Gordonsville area and then uh, in the spring we do one in Carthage so that we cover both of the high schools. But th this is a good event and uh, you come see your friends and come by there. And then Noon Rotary, they've got something going on too, don't yes, they? Yes, we do. Um, each year the Smith County Noon Rotary, um, there's a group of us. We uh, uh, A lot of people get us mixed up with the Carthage Rotary. There is actually two Rotary Clubs in our county. The uh, The Carthage Rotary <clears throat> meets on Tuesday mornings at 6.30. That's that's where the really good Rotarians well, are. Well, uh, that depends on who you're asking. But, <laughs> uh, but um, anyway, uh, our club is called the Smith County Noon Rotary and we meet on uh, Fridays at noon at Cornerstone Restaurant and uh, about this will be the fourth year that we've done this we started a pocket knife fundraiser and uh, I'll show this here but you can get on um, uh, Facebook and look us up Smith County Noon Rotary but uh, we started um, a fundraiser we tried to think of something outside of the box that people would uh, enjoy buying instead of selling them something uh, that's perishable like a food or a cake or a Boston butt. We thought of something that might be valuable that might increase in value over time and we come up with a pocket knife and uh, this like I said this is the fourth year and this year we are releasing that our design is the Caney Fort River. Uh, the knife uh, we have two versions of the knife we have a case knife and a frost cutlery knife. The case uh, is the higher end knife it's made in America uh, it features a custom handle that will be blue and green and it will come in a wood box. Uh, the top of the box will have a logo uh, about the Caney Fort River. Uh, it's got a, a fish and a local artist, uh, Miss Jeannie Penuel, uh, designed that for us. And then on the inside cover of the box, it's got a short history uh, right up about the river. And it also has a photo uh, of a fly fisherman that's taken by a, a local photographer, Mr. Tim Manning. And, uh, the frost cutlery uh, has the same design, uh, but it'll just have a, a green bone handle. These are available for sale. Um, right now we're taking pre-orders up until uh, November the 4th. Uh, the case knives are $75 a piece and the uh, frost cutlery knives are $40 a piece. And uh, I'd mentioned that these increase in value. The first year we did this, we did the Smith County Courthouse. and. We were just getting the fundraiser started and didn't make uh, many of them. And just recently, I seen where one of those knives sold for $125. So um, they're hard to get because we didn't make as many that year. And people realized that we're doing them now and wanted wanted the first years to uh, to add to their collection. So this is something that will increase in value and it's uh, local. Um, we did the Smith County Courthouse the first year. We did the Cordo Hole Bridge the second year. Last year, we did two versions. We did. Uh, Gordonsville High School and Smith County High School uh, and then this year um, is the Caney Fort River. We've got plans of next year to do the uh, the Cumberland River so we'll go ahead and give you a sneak peek of what that one's going to be. So. Okay and these are beautiful knives. I, I've been uh, privileged to get my hands on a few of them and uh, I really enjoy uh, having them and like you said uh, who knows they might become more and more valuable as time goes on. I've been told if you put your money in guns and knives and Gold and silver, it'll it'll always hold its value or increase in value. So that's a it, it's an asset that you can pass down from years to years. So yeah, and it's always something. And, and hey, worst comes to worst, you can use it. Right? Yeah, if you need to <laughs> need to cut something. So uh, I'll also mention, Bill, uh, while I've got time, uh, the uh, Southside Lions Club. 
in Gordonsville. Uh, we got several things coming up. Uh, one is the same day that you all, the Smith County, I mean the Carthage Rotary Club, is having your pancake breakfast. Uh, we're that Saturday morning on the 16th. We're going to have our uh, white cane uh, roadblock there in Gordonsville, right near the pancake breakfast, and all of the money uh, collected that day will go to the uh, white cane foundation. Also, uh, the um, Southside Lions Club is selling um, their annual uh, nut fundraiser. They're selling pecans and chocolate covered pecans and cashews, and those can be bought at uh, Wilson Bank, Smith County Bank, or Citizens Bank uh, in Gordonsville. So if you're over in the Gordonsville area, stop by any of the banks and you can pick up uh, some chocolate covered raisins or some, uh, some pecans so you can make the pecan pie for Thanksgiving. And uh, that's always a good fundraiser. And be sure to get the pecans early because they it's closer Thanksgiving gets, they tend to sell they out. Tend, they mm -hmm. tend to disappear. I'll tell you another thing that's going on too, uh, the foster uh, children, uh, there's a fundraiser for them. It's a chicken and fish fry and uh, Helen's Restaurant is going to be doing the to uh, cooking on this. And uh, it's uh, October the uh, 16th at uh, 4 p.m. at the Ag Center uh, over in uh, uh South Carthage uh, over here, and they're going to have a uh, three-piece chicken strip combo dinner. It's going to be $12, and a uh, uh, fish plate for $12, and then they've got a kid's plate, uh, $7, uh, either ch hot dog, chicken strips, or a fish plate, and then they, they're they going to have a, a lot of sides, you know, beans and hoe cakes, uh, and you can do a combination of any of those things, and uh, they're going to be over there from... Uh, 4 p.m. is when they're going to start serving the food. And then at 5 p.m., they're going to have an auction that starts. And a lot of good things have been donated to be able to uh, uh, make uh, money for this uh, cause. And uh, what the money goes for is uh, foster children here in Smith County. There are a lot of kids that are in foster care here in Smith County. And uh, they, uh, they do this auction to try and give them something to look forward for for Christmas and I think it's a, a very uh, wonderful thing that they do and it's a good auction every year good items and the fish is always good and especially uh, I know Helen's uh, they do a wonderful job of cooking the fish and chicken if that's what you want so uh, don't forget that October the 16th starting at 4 p.m. with the auction at 5 p.m. at the Smith County Ag Center. The 16th is going to be a busy day. You can come get your pancakes for breakfast at the uh, Rotary Club. Right. Stop by and give the Lions Club a little money at the roadblock, and then stop Hell by. Uh, yeah, fry. get some fish at four, so you can uh, make your wife happy and not have to uh, mess up the kitchen that day and the, buy her pancakes and fish. Be an excellent day to take your family out to eat. Right, and cheap too. Eat out all day, cheap. and no, and, and it's it's yeah. not not that expensive. Yep. In fact, a good catfish dinner. <laughs> For seven or, or twelve bucks is a is a bargain. You couldn't get that at a restaurant for that no, kind of money. Sure so. so, folks, uh, you'll be helping a good cause and also uh, getting uh, value for your dollar at the, at the same time. Well, Colby, uh, I guess that's it. Thank you for coming by. I appreciate you having me. I will. I'll put on one more hat oh, if you'll okay. let me. Uh, I'd like to talk about Media Max Digital Advertising. Okay, um, All right. Uh, uh, a good chamber member. Yeah, we just joined the chamber. Uh, if you've been to the Gornsville area lately, uh, you may have seen a, a new uh, digital billboard there just across the street from Pilot. Um, we are a new digital billboard company. We uh, got started in late 2019, uh, kind of got our kickoff in 2020. Uh, we're up to five locations now. Uh, we've got two billboards and uh, that's up in Lenore City, Tennessee, two in Smithville, Tennessee, and then our um, latest one is in Gordonsville here in Smith County, and that's our hometown. We're based out of Gordonsville, and uh, so if we can help you with any advertising over there, uh, go by and check it out. Um, we've, uh, I think we're just about full. I think we got a half spot left, so if you'd like to uh, learn more about that, you can give me a call, uh, or you can find us on Facebook, uh, Media Max Digital Advertising. Or you can give us a call at 615-489-0572. Okay. Well, Kobe, thank you for coming by. And folks, Appreciate you having me. Uh, we'll be looking forward to all these events that are happening on the uh, end of, middle and end of October here. It's a pretty packed month. 
Well, we hope you enjoyed this edition of the Chamber Corner, and there was a lot of good information that's out there and some of the places that we didn't even get a chance to mention. Uh, Granville has a lot of things going on. Uh, in October, their Scarecrow Festival runs all month, and that culminates in their Fall Festival. So uh, go by and see those folks over in Granville. I'm sure that they would be happy to see you. And uh, the Sutton General Store is always open. And, of course, they uh, have those dinners. And uh, they have a lot of good things going on, the, the music and the museum. And, and there's uh, many things that you can go over to Granville and see and do. Uh, and during the month of October, we mentioned all the other things that are going on. And so uh, we hope you have a good time. Uh, remember, Smith County is a great place to work live and play. There's a lot of things to do here. There's great people and we look forward to seeing you next month as we continue on a march toward happiness and the pursuit of it in Smith County. God bless.